So maybe you've got Plex installed, or maybe you don't, and you've been considering virtualizing your Plex installation. You've read about all the benefits of virtualizing operating systems, and you'd like to do it with Plex. Or maybe you want to take it a step further and containerize it with Docker. Well, today, I'm going to show you four ways on how we can get Plex installed and up and running. Hey, welcome back. So I'm Techno Tim, and today we're going to talk about four ways on how you can get Plex installed. As a quick reminder, I stream every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, so if you want to continue the conversation there, we can. So let's talk about Plex. So you're probably familiar with Plex. It's an easy way to share your media across all of your screens, whether that be on a smart TV, a web browser, a mobile device, or another PC. Plex has so many clients, it's almost hard to keep track of. It's almost guaranteed that if you search your device's app store, you'll see Plex there. And while there are many clients for Plex, it does require that you have a server. So when installing your server, you have some options. The first option is gonna be just a default install. And what do I mean by a default install? Well, that means just downloading the installer, installing it. It's pretty straightforward. If you're on Windows or Mac or Linux, you just download the installer and you usually double click it and execute it. You walk through the wizard and the server will be set up. Then you just configure some directories for your media and everything's good to go. So we can cross that one off the list really quick. The next is somewhat similar, but under the lens of virtualization. So if you're virtualizing your server or your PCs with something like Proxmox, you would create that virtual machine, spin it up, and then install Plex on it. And if you need a guide on how to install Proxmox or virtualize Windows or virtualize Ubuntu, I have those too. So these first two are pretty straightforward. The third way is pretty straightforward too, and it, it takes some specialized hardware. That's installing it on a NAS. So if you're running a commercial NAS, you'll just go into that NAS app store, download, and install it. Then you'll configure media directories and you're up and going. So if you've built your own NAS using something like Unraid or FreeNAS, which is soon to be TrueNAS, you would just simply find the Plex plugin and install it. And the same thing, we would configure our media directories and you'd be up and going. So the fourth way is something I'm gonna focus on today. And that's a little less traditional, but very powerful. And that's installing Plex using Docker. Now, if you haven't used Docker before, it might be a little bit scary, and I get it. Docker itself relies heavily on command line, and just using plain old Docker gives you very low visibility onto what's going on. And there are products out there to help you with that, things like Portainer or something like Rancher. So today, in this video, we're gonna set up Plex using Docker and Rancher so that you can containerize Plex. It's easier than you think. So let's get started. So a couple things you're gonna need. First, you're gonna need a Linux server. We're gonna use Ubuntu Linux. And if you need a guide on how to set this up, I have one. Next, you're gonna need Docker installed. If you need help with installing Docker, I've got a guide on how to set up Docker, Rancher, and Kubernetes. That tutorial will walk you through all the necessary steps to get going. And if you don't wanna do any of that, you can just install Docker yourself. It's pretty straightforward. Once you have your Linux server configured and Docker installed, start it up. Then you'll wanna SSH into it. Now, if you're using Proxmox, you don't necessarily have to use SSH. You can do this from the Proxmox console. Once you're in, we'll want to make sure Docker's running and installed. So docker-v should return something. If it doesn't, you'll need to get Docker installed. If Docker's running, it's good to go. If not, you'll need to get it set up. So now we'll want to get the Docker image. Now, I know Plex maintains a Docker image, but I've had a lot of success with LinuxServer.io. LinuxServer.io is a collection of Docker containers that are maintained. They pulled in some of the most popular Docker images, keep them up to date, provide a consistent way to use them, and provide really good documentation. I've been using these images for a couple of years and they work great. You're free to use the official Plex one, but I'm gonna focus on these. So once you get here, we'll go to documentation, we'll scroll down, you can see all of their images here. You should see Plex in this list. And once we get here, they'll have snippets for how to spin it up in Docker or using Docker Compose. So let's take a look at this snippet. It's pretty easy to figure out. So first we're gonna see Docker create. This is gonna create the container. Then we're gonna name it Plex. Then we're gonna say the networking is host-based networking. Then we're passing in an environment variable of PUID. So this is gonna be our user ID. And then we're gonna pass in another environment variable, PG ID, and this is our group ID. And this helps with permissions and you'll see that later. The next environment variable is version. Now I usually keep this set to Docker, which means Docker will maintain the version. The unmask set is for permissions. We won't be using this. Plex claim is for a token for your server. 
We'll get this later. And then we'll have volumes. So we're passing in a path to our library and mapping it to the containers config folder. Then we're passing in a path to our TV series media and that will be mapped to the slash TV folder in the container. Then another path for movies we're gonna pass in and that maps to the Docker container slash movies folder. And then restart and let's stop. This will automatically restart the Docker container if something happens like a crash. And last is the image name we're using, which is Linux server slash Plex. So we can copy and paste this right now and put this in our terminal and we could spin it up. Now, obviously you would have to tailor this command to the properties you want to set. And you're free to customize this and then hit enter and spin this container up. But I'm going to show you how I do it. So remember earlier how I said Docker doesn't give you a lot of visibility into what's going on. I mean, sure, you could remote into your Docker server, type in Docker PS, look at all your images, tail the logs and see what's going on. But I've been using Rancher for the last couple of years and it makes Docker super easy to use. I've been using Rancher 1 for years and I use Cattle as my container orchestration. But with the release of Rancher 2, they've been supporting Kubernetes. And so slowly I've been migrating my Rancher 1 instances over to Rancher 2 instances, mainly because I want Kubernetes. You could spin up Rancher 2 in probably about 15 minutes with my guide. And once you have it up and running, it's super easy to add services. So let's convert that Docker Compose or that Docker CLI to a Rancher deployment on Kubernetes. It's super simple. So first we'll go into cluster, make sure we're on our cluster and click default. And you can see we don't have any services running right now. So we're gonna click deploy. And here's where we'll map the Docker configuration to a Rancher deployment. Okay, so let's name this. So it looks like we're gonna name it Plex. Then for our Docker image, that's right here. It's Linux server slash Plex. So let's put that in here. The namespace we're gonna keep as default. And next we'll need to map some ports. So let's click add port. So the name of this port is gonna be Plex. And the default Plex port is 32400. And we don't specify it there, but I'd rather specify it here so it's really clear on which port we're using. So it's 32400 and it's TCP. Next, we'll need to change this to host port. We're only gonna have a single node running Plex, so we want it to map to that specific node. And so mapping the host port is the way to do that. And then it's asking us which port it's listening on. It's 32400 on the inside. Okay, so far so good. So next we'll need to set some environment variables. Now this is everything you see here with the E. So first is PUID. So the value is gonna vary. The way that you find this value is to remote into that Linux server. And you wanna make sure that your ID in your group matches the account you're logged in with. So the way to do this is just ID and then your name. So ID, Techno Tim. And it looks like our GID is 1001 and our group is 1001. So let's set that. And our PGID, 1001. Next, we'll need to set the version. So we'll add variable version and we'll set this to Docker. And if you wanna try a different value here, they're all documented on Linux server IO, but I always use latest or Docker. Next, we're gonna set one that isn't documented in their example right here, but it's our time zone. So we're gonna add a variable for TZ and I'm gonna set mine to America slash Chicago. Next, let's add our volumes. So if we expand this, click add volume, We'll want to add a bind mount, a directory from the node here. Let's name this volume Plex config. So the path on the node is the folder it's going to live on on this node. So let's set this up in our home directory. So if we're in our server and we type in PWD, a present working directory, this is slash home slash techno tim. So let's create a folder called Plex. Okay, dir, Plex. So let's set up this volume. So the path on the node is going to be slash home slash techno tim slash plex. And then our mount point is going to be this on the right side. It's slash config. So let's add another volume for our movies. Same thing, by mount, a directory from the node. Let's call this plex movies. Path on disk. It's home slash techno tim slash movies. And our mount point. This is over here. So this is going to be slash movies. Okay, let's add one more for music. Same thing, Plex music. Here we're gonna go Plex slash music. And our mount point is going to be slash music. Okay, and if everything looks good, we can launch it. Okay, so now Rancher is spinning up our Plex instance with Kubernetes. 
Okay, so it looks like it's running. Now we can go to the URL or we can click on this service right here. This is going to be the same address that Ranch is running on, but with a different port. So our Plex server is running. Awesome, so that's working so far. Let's sign in with email. Awesome, now we're signed into Plex. So you can see some of the free stuff that Plex offers. This isn't any of my media. And you'll notice we don't have any media here. And if we go to more, your media, it looks like we don't have a server installed. Now, we obviously have a server installed because this is being served out on our local IP address. So it looks like we need to get a claim. So in order to do that, we just need to go to plex.tv slash claim, and then it'll generate a claim code for you. You'll want to keep the secret. This is like your password for your Plex server. So let's copy this clipboard. Let's go back to Rancher. Let's make some adjustments to this Docker image. Go to edit. We'll want to add one more environment variable claim and we'll want to paste that in there one thing we'll have to change is our scaling update policy because we're not running this in ha mode and we don't have multiple plex nodes running we'll want to choose this option here kill all pods then start new save there we go it looks like it's up and running let's go back to our plex server okay now that we have our claim let's add some media now i know what you're thinking I don't want to go and copy all of my media to this Linux server. You might be running FreeNAS or TrueNAS or Samba Share somewhere else, and you already have your Plex media set up. So I definitely agree that you don't want to copy your media to this Rancher Docker installation. I mean, you can if that's all you plan on using it for, but it's best to keep that media somewhere else. So I got you covered. We're actually going to map this folder from this Linux server to a Samba Share on the network. So I'm running FreeNAS and I already created a Samba share. So this Samba share is called Plex Media. It's mounted in the path mount storage zero Plex Media. And then I have some folders shared out. So if we go out to that share Plex Media, you'll see I have two folders, one with movies, which only has one movie, and one with music, which has a folder full of music. And you'll see on my Linux server, this isn't actually on this server right here. If we do an LS, it's empty. So we want this Ubuntu server to mount this Samba share when it boots up. It's pretty simple. It goes like this. So first we're going to need to install a couple of utilities on our Linux server. So we're going to need to install the SIFS utils. So once we have that installed, we can actually connect to Samba shares. Next, we'll want to actually store our credentials on this device. And we want to store them securely. Since my FreeNAS Samba share is actually password protected, we'll need to save that locally. We'll do it as securely as possible. So we want to create a file with our credentials. So this SMB credentials file is going to live in our profile. Here we'll set username equals and your username for your Samba share. Then we'll set password equals and that's equal to your password for your Samba share. Once you have that set, save the file. Then we'll want to set some permissions so that no one else can read this file. So we're going to sudo chmod it to 600. Now that that's set, we can actually use that file instead of putting the credentials in our FS tab. So let's modify FS tab, sudo nano etc FS tab. Next, you want to make sure you have your FS tab set like this. So it's going to be the path to your share, mounting it at a local slash movies, then the credentials we set. And you'll do that again for music too. So we'll save that. And then to test it out, we'll do sudo mount dash a. That looks good, so let's cd into cd slash mnt slash movies. There we go, we should see our movie there. So now that we changed that, we'll need to change one more thing in Rancher or our Docker configuration. We originally set up this container to look at a path in our home directory, but we wanna change this now to look at the mount path. So let's do that. So we'll go back in, go to default, choose Plex, we'll go to edit, and now for our volumes, we'll scroll down to movies and we'll need to set this to where we just mounted it, our mount point. So that's slash MNT slash movies and do the same for music. Slash MNT slash music and we'll save that. Okay, that looks good. Let's go back out to our Plex server. Then once you go back to your Plex server, if you have your claim token right, you'll see the screen. So let's walk through the wizard. So you can set up whether or not you want to see it outside of your home. You can add a library. Let's add our music. Browse for media. 
Net with slash music. Let's add to library. Let's add another one. Let's add our movies. Browse. And so a quick call out right here, you're actually seeing the volumes that are exposed to the Docker container. So we see our movies here. We'll add them. Add to library. Click next. Click done. So we'll go to more. We'll see our movies here. And here we go. Awesome. So this movie is actually streaming from my Docker container, which then is connected to my FreeNAS server through a Samba share. Okay, let's check out our music. Go to music. Go to our music album. So same thing. This music lives actually on our FreeNAS server. We're connected to that FreeNAS server through a Samba share, which is then connected to our Linux server which then is running Docker in Rancher and Plex is running inside of that container. So this is actually really cool. We have our Docker containers now running on this Linux server. And the nice thing is we don't have to keep spinning up virtual machines every time we need a new service. So if we want to add another service, we just add another Docker container. And then that Docker container can spin up on that Linux virtual machine. So you could have one Linux virtual machine hosting lots and lots of services. And I know you're thinking, well, I can probably just install all of those services individually on that virtual machine. But that's where things get a little bit complicated. If you do that, you'll have to worry about updating each application individually. You'll have to worry about port conflicts and many other things that come with installing an application locally. Using Docker containers and volumes and system variables is a repeatable way to get applications on your servers. So you don't need to go and install four or five, six virtual machines for every Docker container you need. You spin up one virtual machine running Linux, install Docker, and install all your containers there. And this greatly reduces the resource requirements. Because if you think about it, if you had five services, you would spin up five Linux servers, and each five of those would require RAM, CPU, disk space, and soon you'd run out. But in this scenario, we spun up one Linux server, and then we can spin up five containers and run those all inside this Linux server. So then you really only need to virtualize the things you need to in virtualize. Another great advantage of doing this is that you could actually pass through this hardware to this one Linux virtual machine and have all of these containers take advantage of it. Say for instance, you wanted to do Plex transcoding on a GPU and you wanted to run some other service that requires a GPU. Well, if you have a Docker container for each, they both can take advantage of that video card instead of the alternative, which is two virtual machines which can't share consumer grade GPU. You would either have to get two GPUs or an enterprise grade GPU and share that with both of the virtual machines. But this is a simple way to combine services so that you can do something like that in the future. So with that being said, are there other services you would like to see me containerize? If so, let me know in the comments section below. I'll have some more videos soon of all of the great Docker containers that are out there. And maybe that'll help you choose between whether you should virtualize something or containerize something. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. And as a reminder, I stream every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. So if you have a question about this video or any of my other videos, hop in my stream and I'd love to have you. So thanks so much for watching and till next time, stream on my friends.